Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to flush your heater core safely using a garden hose. The reason why you would flush your heater core is because when you have the heat on and you put the fan on and the engine's warmed up, you're not really getting much heat. It might be a little bit warm or it might just be cold. That is a typical sign of a clogged heater core. Now if you turn your vents on for defrost or you turn your vents on the floor and you see steam coming out, or if you smell antifreeze, that means you have a leaking heater core. And if that's the case, you need to replace it. Flushing that heater core out is only going to make things worse. But if your heater core isn't leaking and you're not getting the heat that you want to get, you don't think it's hot enough or it's not hot at all, give this a try. If you haven't seen my video where I diagnose the whole heating system, I go through every step to check almost any vehicle. I check the heater core, I check the coolant level, I check the thermostat, water pump, I show you how the blend door works, I check the blower motor, blower motor resistor, I show you all that in one video. And at the end of this video, you can check that video out with the link in the description below. But if you have a feeling that your heater core is clogged, this video is perfect for you. A heater core replacement could take 8 to 10 hours on some vehicles and cost over $1,000 because of all that labor. The heater core itself is usually under 50 bucks, but all that labor and you have to take the dash apart just to get to the heater core. So the reason why I'm doing this heater core flush isn't because my heater core is clogged, I just want to see if I could get more heat out of it. It's also good preventative maintenance, but if your heater core is clogged, this is also a very good reason to try to flush your heater core. So we can see the engine's up to operating temperature, the coolant is nice and warm. I'm going to put the heat on for the vent, the heat's on all the way, and I'm going to put it up all the way. I have an instant read thermometer, I'm going to stick in the vent, and we're going to see how hot this gets. Okay, after a few minutes of this running, it's at 125.5, and it's pretty much staying in that spot right there. So now we're going to go do a heater core flush and see if we could get that to increase. To find the two heater core hoses, you just go up to your engine, usually on the passenger side or in the middle of the firewall, which is this back wall here. You'll see two hoses going right into the firewall. In this case, you can see here's one and two. They're side by side, and that's what it's typically going to look like. Now that you located the heater core hoses, you want to try to find the inlet hose and the outlet hose. The inlet hose is the coolant going in, and the outlet hose is the coolant flowing out. You want to identify these hoses because you want to reverse flush. We're going to push the water in through the outlet hose. And the reason why we're going to do that is because the coolant's always running the normal direction, you know, through the inlet hose. So if you reverse flow it, you're mixing things up, you're, you're flushing things out. Now on this Mazda B3000 Ford Ranger, it's really simple. You just look for this heater control valve. I showed you in the other video, this opens and closes based on if you turn the heat on or not. And this allows the coolant to flow into the radiator hose. So this one, my left side here, is gonna be the inlet hose. And my right side here is gonna be my outlet hose. So now that we identified that, we could begin. Now you want to make sure you're doing this when the engine is cool. You do not want a hot engine. You never want to touch the cooling system with the engine hot. So make sure that needle is on the cold. So they make these little flush kits. They're five bucks at your local hardware store. I'll put a link in the description to where you could get one of these. Now I'm not going to use that kit. What I'm going to use, I got this adapter from my local hardware store. So this is going to connect to my hose. You can see they're both the same type of end. So I'm actually going to use the little adapter that comes in that flush kit that I said you could get for five bucks. I'm just going to connect this so it's nice and tight. And then this side will connect to the hose. So now we have the hose connected to this 5 8 adapter here. So I have this clear hose. It's going to connect to this hose. And this clear hose is 5 8 inner diameter. Don't worry about the outer diameter. The inner diameter is the important part. So we're gonna have to take off both of these hoses. They have these simple hose clamps that are on here. So get your pliers, squeeze that and slide it down. Okay, both clamps are off. These might be a little bit difficult for you to get off. So what you do is you just twist them. Be very careful, you don't wanna to press too hard over here. On some makes and models, it's plastic where this gets connected to. I think on mine it's metal, but you're just gonna twist it back and forth so once that moves back and forth, you know it's loose. Do the same thing to the other one. That's moving back and forth. So they're both loose, they'll both easily come out now. The garden hose is gonna go into the outlet side, so we're gonna do that first. Try not to make a mess, so just get this ready here. And just pull this off. Okay, get that on there, 
Okay, that's on there pretty good. So now we have our garden hose in our outlet side. Now we're going to take off our inlet side and put our exhaust hose. It's the same exact hose, same exact diameter, it's just longer and it's going to go right into this bucket. I'm using a clear bucket so you can see how dirty it really is. Remember, always recycle antifreeze in your coolant and also keep it away from animals because they like to drink it. It tastes sweet and it'll kill them. I'm going to take this off here. Good. Let's move that up. Slide our exhaust hose on here. Okay. Now when your two hoses are on there, nice and tight, we're ready to flush. Okay, I just want to quickly go over the setup because that's the most difficult part for this whole thing. And the setup is we have our incoming hose water coming in here. I have an adapter that'll connect to this 5 8 diameter hose. You want the inside diameter to be the same as the inside diameter of your stock heater core hose. So we go in from the hose and we're going into the outlet. So normally coolant comes out of here, but this time we're forcing water through there. So then the water's gonna go into the heater core, through the outlet, and then here's the, the normal inlet hose, but is now gonna be the outlet hose, the exhaust hose, we'll call it. And it's gonna come out into the bucket. Now just to give you an idea, this whole setup was around $10, the hose was about six bucks, the adapter was about $3, not bad. So now at the spigot here, you wanna be very careful. This heater core doesn't get a lot of pressure. Most heater cores get maximum 10 PSI of pressure from the water pump. If you put a higher pressure than 10 PSI, you could cause a leak in your heater core, you could cause your heater core to blow out, all bad things. So I definitely want to keep the pressure below 10 PSI. A typical hose is normally around 40 PSI. So we're going to turn this so that's a quarter of the way open, and I measured that to be about a half a turn. So we're going to have the nice clean water coming in, and then the old dirty water coming out. So I want you to pay attention to the difference here. It's going to be a slight difference, but you'll see the difference. So now I'm going to turn the hose on. You can see that's darker. Well, now it's kind of clear. It's pretty quick to pump this out. The heater core is not very large. So once your coolant bucket gets filled up, it shouldn't take too long. You should have clean water coming out of your hose. You could keep it running. You could put it to a new bucket if you want and just recycle that, or you could just shut the hose off. I'm gonna go shut the hose off, this looks really clean. Shut that off, good. So we're back at the truck, everything looks real clear. The exhaust hose looks good, it's nice and clear. There's the dirty fluid that got pumped out and flushed out of the heater core. You can actually see little pieces floating around. My heater core wasn't that bad. I might get a little bit more efficiency. Also, cleaning out your heater core is never a bad thing. So I'm gonna give you a different scenario here. Let's say you turn your hose on, the water goes in, but you're getting a little trickle out. Maybe nothing comes out, it's kinda of just clogged. Shut your hose off. You're gonna to wanna to get some radiator cleaner. This is a uh, radiator flush and cleaner. Your heater core is aluminum, your radiator is aluminum. Make sure that you use something that is good for aluminum. Don't use any of those household chemicals like CLR that's not made for aluminum. You will etch the aluminum and cause more corrosion and more problems. So just pour some of this in right through your inlet hose, let it soak, and then connect your hose again after whatever, half an hour, 45 minutes, however long you want it to soak, and then try to flush that stuff into the system and that should unclog it. Try not to increase the pressure if you have to. I mean, your heater core is bad anyway, you might as well try it increase the pressure a little bit, but that's only if you have a real problem where it's clogged and you're not getting water flow out of both the hoses. The other option that you could do is let's say you got flow like I just did, but your heater core was really dirty and the water wasn't clear yet, or you didn't have that great of flow. Well, what you could do, reverse these hoses. So you just flushed it in the reverse way, now just flip these hoses around, flush it through the other way, and then flip these hoses around one more time and flush it through back the opposite way. So you're going to do a reverse flush, a normal flush, and then a reverse flush. And that should just really mix up all that coolant, mix up all the debris and everything in there, and get it flushed out. My system wasn't bad. You saw, got all that gunk out, and then the water ran nice and clear, and there was good flow the whole time, so I'm done. Now I'm going to disconnect our hose here, and now we're going to flush out the water that's in here. So I'm going to get a funnel, put a funnel in here, 
and we're gonna fill it up with antifreeze so that we don't have any water and we maintain our 50-50 mixture. You don't really have to do this step because even if you just leave that water in the heater core, such a small amount will just mix with the rest of the coolant in your cooling system and you won't even notice the difference. So once we get some green fluid coming out of this hose right here, we're gonna be done. Make sure you use the correct antifreeze that is recommended in your owner's manual. Okay. So you can see our exhaust hose now has the green antifreeze in it and that means that our heater core is filled with 50-50 antifreeze. So now we're just going to disconnect our lines. Got that one off. That's the one that connects to the hose. Got the other one off. Remember to keep track of your hoses. This one with the heater control valve is on the inlet side. So we're going to take this. We're going to connect it. Make sure it goes all the way to the base. Just like that. And we're going to connect our other one. Make sure that goes all the way to the base. Get our pliers here. Slide the hose clamp all the way down. Slide that all the way down. Just like that. And we're done. That's how you flush a heater core. Now we're gonna go for a ride and make sure the heat gets hot. So we're about to go for a ride. Just wanna make sure that these are both on correctly. Just inspect over here and make sure that none of this slipped off or something and that all your hoses are good to go. You also wanna make sure that you don't have any coolant or water on your serpentine belt here. If coolant or water gets on the serpentine belt, it could cause it to slip, or even the belt could slip off, and you wouldn't want that. I've actually had that happen to me on a coolant flush. Okay, the engine's at operating temperature. You can see the coolant is nice and hot. Just got back from a short drive. Real quick, we just wanna go in here. It's pretty hot. Rode around for 10 minutes. There is no leaking, there's no dripping and we're good to go. I have the heat on all the way, I have the fan on high like before, and the vent on just like before. And you can see here, it's at 150 degrees and still rising slowly. This is really hot compared to before. Before it was at 125 and it wouldn't get any hotter. I didn't even have a coolant problem. The heater just wasn't as hot as I thought it could have been. It was plenty hot, it still got the cabin really hot, and I need to shut this off because this is getting really hot. So I wanted to give it a shot, and I also just wanted to show you guys how to do it. And obviously you could see the results. Before, 125 degrees. After the flush, 150 degrees. Increase in 25 degrees, my heater core wasn't even that dirty, and I hope you guys get the same results. Let me know how you do with your heater core flush. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. The top tip for this video is during the summer, make sure you put your heat on once a month. Even though it's really hot out, just turn it on when you're not in the car, let it run for five minutes on high, blast the heat. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna circulate the coolant inside that heater core. If you don't turn the heat on, pretty much all summer, you're gonna be using the cold air here, so you're not gonna be using any heat, and you're pretty much just gonna be using the air conditioner. So again, no heat. If you have that heater control valve that opens and closes, well, during the summer, that valve is never going to open and that heater core is never going to get flushed out. So all that stuff in the heater core is going to settle to the bottom and it could create clogs. And also you're going to have stagnant old coolant in the heater core, which is not good. So what you should do, turn on heat, blast it, just for five minutes. Once a month in the summer, just a little top tip. And that'll keep your heater core in tip-top shape. And this video is going to have two top tips. And the second top tip for this video is going to be always recycle your coolant. Places will take this for free because they get paid. If you go to your local auto parts store, a lot of times they'll accept this. Just put it back in the old container or whatever container you have because dogs, like this dog here, will try to drink this because it tastes sweet and it's really poisonous. Isn't that right, Spike?